The boxing power brokers of the 1970s always saw him as an opponent, like a jobber in professional wrestling whose name is forgotten the moment after it is announced. He was the B-side for higher profile fighters, but in his prime, he more than held his own against the likes of Ken Norton and Muhammad Ali and defeated the division's hardest hitters in Ron Lyle and George Foreman. Now, despite these credentials, he is rarely mentioned in the countless books and documentaries that have been made on Muhammad Ali, nor is he anywhere near a Hall of Fame induction. But everyone he fought will always remember the name. Now, Jimmy Young was born and raised in Philadelphia and began boxing at the age of 14. His foray into the sport began when a group of older kids stole his transistor radio and wanting to learn how to defend himself, Young entered the local PAL boxing program and immersed himself in the sport. He watched the fights every Friday night, idolizing the great Sugar Ray Robinson, while going on to win two New Jersey Golden Gloves titles. But Young didn't find himself on the cusp of Olympic glory. As he entered adulthood, he had to find work doing odd jobs in order to support himself. Working as a truck driver, construction worker, cargo worker, cleaning and sorting laundry, and his father took him under his wing and taught him how to become a welder like himself. And by 1969, at the age of 21, Young had a wife and two children to support. It was then that he decided that the odd jobs weren't enough. He had to seek his fortune as a professional boxer. Now, Young had rough going early in his career. He suffered losses to the likes of Clay Hodges, Roy Williams, and Randy Newman. He was knocked out in three rounds by Ernie Shavers. But ironically, it would be the knockout loss to Ernie Shavers that turned Young's career around. He promised himself that he would get better. 21 months later, he would rematch Shavers, but this go around, the fight would be declared a draw, with most ringsiders protesting that Young had been robbed. The unjust decision would be an omen for things to come in his career. Still unheralded, Young stepped into the ring as a huge underdog against the highly touted Ron Lyle, who was in line for a title shot. But Young easily outpointed the heavyweight slugger, shutting him out over 10 rounds. His confidence surged, but he failed to impress over a year later with a decision victory over Jose Roman. Still, a 34-year-old Muhammad Ali watched Young in action that night. Ali was looking for a routine payday and saw Young as an easy mark. The fight was signed and Young would get his shot at the title. Ali weighed in at a career-high 230 pounds, obviously feeling that he needed very little training to defeat the unknown contender out of Philadelphia. But Jimmy Young trained to put forth the fight of his life. Young frustrated Ali, fighting in spurts and in some sequences using Ali's own moves against him. He would set traps for Ali, fire off quick combinations, and force Ali into the unfamiliar role of having to press the fight. Two years after Ali used the rope a dope strategy of leaning on the ropes against George Foreman, he was now losing to a fighter who flipped the script on him. Young also added his own nuance to the rope a dope, often ducking his head outside the ropes to avoid Ali's punches. The decision was controversial, and noted boxing writer Dick Young scored the bout. 11 to 4 in rounds in favor of Jimmy Young. Cries of robbery came from reporters and fans alike. Reporters would ask Ali if he would give Jimmy Young a rematch and his response was always the same. Jimmy Young, Ali sneered, he's nothing. Young saw himself as the uncrowned champion. He had a rematch with Ron Lyle and once again proved his technical mastery over the heavyweight strongman. Young hurt Lyle in the fifth round and won another near shutout. Four months after the Lyle fight, Young would score the biggest win of his career against George Foreman. It's hard for me to say right now exactly how I'll fight George. From the first round on, as the fight progresses, uh, I can deal with it from there, you know. But my, my basically my plan is to, uh, to outsmart George, to counterpunch George, and to, uh, to keep him at a certain distance. No, that isn't a, a anything ordinary. That's a defense most anybody would have to use to face me. Stay away. That's logical. 
And as a matter, I'm not worried too much about what he'll do. He's worried about what I'll do. He's trying to stay away, and you don't really have to train for a defense like that. All you got to do is just survive. I'm sure that's what he'll be trying to do, survive. For Jewel's form, I think uh, the best thing for me is to, to get inside too close and on the outside too far. Well, I said if he, if he comes to me, I'm going to break his neck. And if he chooses to run away, I'm going to catch him and break his neck. I don't plan to actually just say uh, I'm going to stay away from him. I can, I can change at any time. Whatever I, ha whatever I see is necessary to do, I can do. That's the condition I'm in. My mind is in and my body. No, I'm not going to change my style. As a matter of fact, I'm going to try to adapt him to my style. And my style is a basic one-two punch and down you go. I still can't right now set a plan and say how I'll fight George, you know, because I don't know what he'll do, you know, in the first round. I don't know how to fight. I don't know what he'll do in the second round, third round, or fourth round. But one thing I do promise, this will be a good fight. The fight started slow as Foreman tried numerous dirty tactics, all of which failed to rile the now seasoned young. But Foreman came close to ending things in the seventh round as he uncorked a barrage of lefts and rights to Young's head, badly hurting him. Young would later admit that he was losing consciousness and that he couldn't see. I thought I wasn't going to make it, Young said after the fight. If he would have gotten a few more shots in, I would have been through. But he didn't. Young then realized that the feared gunslinger in the heavyweight division didn't have any more bullets. And then he himself began firing at will. 35 seconds left. Aggressors roll. Look at that right. Crowd chanting, Jimmy Young, Jimmy Young, Jimmy Young. <laughs> the arm crowns against Gregorio Peralta. Look at Young working to the midsection. I have no present recollection of him ever having to go into the left. Foreman off balance. Amateurs, Jimmy Young working him over. Dixon strategy. All 12,000 standing with a round to go. Well, know that Jimmy Young is a fighter after this fight. Somebody said to him at a press conference the other day, a lot of us don't think you've got the heart. He said, what do you know about my heart? The eighth round, a minute and 15. He's tired. Left to go in the fight. If that's a knockdown, that'll help Wait Young. Minute. Wait a minute. It's counted as a knockdown. He counted it as a knockdown. Right. Debris pouring into the ring. But the referee saw it as a knockdown. And so the eighth. Down. Look at Young. This fight is over. And look at that crowd get to its feet. Oh, All right, Chris, as usual, the bedlam scene. I'm with Jimmy Young, but we're still awaiting the official decision. Jimmy, 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 he wants to talk to George Foreman, understandably, for just a moment. All right, as you can see, I have George and Jimmy both here. We're awaiting the decision. George, first your comment on the kind of fight Jimmy Young fought. No comment, Howard. No comment? Okay. Jimmy, your comment. You made your fight plan stick, as you saw it. Yes. Although I got hurt real bad, I think it was the fifth round. I to tell the truth, I didn't really think I was going to make it. It was but the seventh round, Jimmy. Seventh, yeah, I don't even remember. I think it was desperation. Desperation, you say, kept you alive. Here's the decision. The win would be the high point of Young's career. Six months later, Young was matched up against Ken Norton in a title eliminator for the WBC belt. Young took an early lead, but Norton closed fast, winning five of the last six rounds. The fight was close to all observers, with the Associated Press scoring the fight 143 to 142 in favor of Norton. Young felt strongly that he won. Norton later revealed in an ESPN radio interview that the young fight was the one decision he didn't think would go his way. 
Young would later admit that the Norton loss took the wind out of his sails, even more so than the decision that went against them in the Ali fight. His heart no longer in the sport, he showed up out of shape for a bout against the unknown Ozzy Ocasio and lost a split decision. The two would rematch seven months later and Young would once again lose as Ocasio would use a high guard throughout both fights, counting on the fact that Young never punched to the body. Young would then show up for bouts over 15 to 20 pounds over his optimal fighting weight and became nothing more than a stepping stone for the new breed of heavyweights like Michael Dokes, Jerry Cooney, and Greg Page. Young had accepted his role as a gatekeeper, saying, it doesn't bother me that people want to fight me just to have my name on their record. I guess that's my role now. After the Page loss, Young would continue to lose until even club fighters began adding his name to their resume. A George Foreman summed up Jimmy Young's career best when he described him as being an opponent. And once he accepted that role, a line was crossed and there was no going back. Jimmy Young didn't have the pedigree or the star power of Muhammad Ali or George Foreman, so it became easy for judges to rule against him. His fighting spirit died after the Norton loss, as he thought that the deck would always be stacked against him, so he accepted his fate. The label of opponent that the boxing establishment had ordained for him, even though the scorecards of most fans who saw him in his prime had him as a winner.